Hey guys, Ivan here, and this video we're gonna begin with a little bit of a Phil Heath talk. So, as you guys must have seen at this point, Phil Heath tweeted this. So he said, I haven't felt and looked this good in a long time. Body is finally responding after those two hernia surgeries and also torn MCL from 2020. I'm enjoying the process as all I think of is triumph. Come back, hashtag. So what he's saying here basically is that his body is finally responding as if it wasn't responding when he was prepping for 2020 Mr. Olympian. This is what he looked like last year and guys, he did not look bad. I mean, other than bubble gut, other than stomach issue, uh, call it whatever you want, no, he, he wasn't that bad. This is the photo that was recently posted by the photographer Walt Whitman and this back double bicep of Phil Heath right now, and this is in 2020. It looks absolutely amazing, outstanding. He was not at his best at the Mr. Olympia stage, but the back double bicep, which is basically his best pose, arguably, it was amazing, it was great, it doesn't seem like his body wasn't responding. I actually even heard multiple people saying that they saw Phil Heath and his back double bicep in person, and they said it was just absolutely crazy, freaky, impressive looking back, and overall his physique, he was in good condition, his body was uh, where it was back in the day, other than the stomach. Right here you can see the front, so chest, shoulders, arms, it all looked great, but with this kind of a uh, stomach issue, um, putting it mildly here, it can't look that much better because it just makes his entire physique look worse, I mean, the proportions are completely off, so his body, everything except from the stomach, responded well. Here is the most muscular when he was at his prime, maybe a little bit better, but not that much. The main difference, that the major one, is of course the midsection. So why am I saying this? In his tweet, he did not exactly say it's everything else other than the midsection that is responding well. He said, I haven't felt and looked this good in a long time. Body is finally responding after those two hernia surgeries. He is specifically talking about the hernia surgeries and his midsection that is getting better. He is not exactly saying that his entire body is starting to look better, but it kind of seems that way. But why am I saying this is because everything else on Phil hit was great. The only problem was a midsection. And that's the only thing that he needs to fix. If he had normal midsection, he would have won that Mr. Olympia. He would have beaten Big Ramy. The only problem was the midsection, and that's all he needs to fix. He can come the same as he was last year, he can probably even be a little bit worse. And I think he can still win, because that's how good Phil Heath is. And he still didn't lose any of the fullness, the roundness, uh, everything that, that, that really makes Phil Heath. Phil Heath is there, just the midsection, is, it's also what makes him, and also, unfortunately, and also it's still there. So maybe if he can fix that, somehow, by some miracle, then yeah, he can win again, he can triumph. Until that happens, no way, no way, look at this. I mean, this is just horrible, this is just too, too bad, really, really bad. He just destroys the entire physique. That's all he needs to fix. If he fixes that by some magic, I don't know how, it didn't happen so far, maybe it's gonna happen this year, I don't know, I don't think so, I doubt that, I don't think, but maybe if he does that, yes, I think he can win the Mr. Olympia. What about his biggest rival from back in the day? Now, a lot of guys are tagging me in these photos, and there is a lot of guys who are saying they unsubbed from the channel, they dislike the channel, they don't like me talking about Kai. But guys, honestly, here's the thing. I would never talk about stuff like, for example, Sintel Freaks. Why is that? Because a lot of people associate that with bodybuilding, and that has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with bodybuilding. It just creates bad rap for us, Especially when bodybuilding channels are talking about it. And I have a bodybuilding channel and I'm not gonna talk about those guys. That hurts bodybuilding. But Kai Green comeback stories that never happen, that doesn't really hurt bodybuilding. That's great for bodybuilding, even if it doesn't happen. It still creates some, some talk about bodybuilding, some excitement. And I just really hope it's gonna happen. I believe, I'm an optimist, guys. I'm sorry, I really believe it's gonna happen this year. I know, maybe I'm stupid for believing, but that's how I am, I really believe that, and maybe I'm just uh, emotional about it because I want it to be true. Kai Green is a person I really dislike. I never ever liked his personality, even back in the day, I don't know how long you guys are following bodybuilding, but back then when there was Generation Iron movie out, everybody was liking Kai Green, he had so many fans, everybody hated Phil Heath, 
and uh, I didn't like Hai because I thought he was too fake, he was not honest, and now it seems like he's a complete liar, right, he's teasing us every year, he keeps lying that he's gonna compete, he's gonna come back, so um, him as a personality, as a person, I absolutely dislike him, but his physique, guys, if you ask me, Ronnie Coleman, Phil Heath, Dorian Yates, Jay Cutler, and then Kai Green. I think Kai Green's physique is better than Kevin Leveroni's, Flex Wheeler's, Nasser Al Sambari's, Sean Ray, Brandon Curry, Big Ramy, whoever. I think Kai Green, at his best, is fifth best physique of all time. I know many will disagree, but just check this out. 2013. This was just absolutely insane. It was just freakiness all day. Phil Heath was only that much better that he was actually able to beat this year after year. Not every year though, I think Kai beat him in 2010 before Phil became the Mr. Olympia, but after that it was uh, it was not really possible for Kai anymore, Phil was just that much better, but it was very close. Kai, wow, I mean look at his physique, like how much muscle and what kind of condition he has, this is just really unique. And guys, there is a chance that you might see this again on the stage this year. Okay, sure, maybe not that good of a physique, but still, Kai Green on the stage again. If there is a chance, and there is a lot of talk right now, I will talk about it, I will cover it. So, George Farah, his coach, his guru, Kai's coach, posted this. So, he says, we started back four weeks ago and Kai is already looking freaky. So, they started working together. Kai hired his coach back. Does that mean even more that Kai is competing? It might be the case, Aaron Singerman is saying stuff like that, Kai himself of course is saying that, he's, he, he has been saying it for a long time. Now we have his coach saying that the Kai hired him, I mean it doesn't really mean anything really, but there is a really big chance, bigger than all of those years. And the way Kai looks right now, hmm, I think the chances of him not competing this year are definitely smaller than him competing this year. I think, I do think, I believe we're gonna see Kai Green on stage this year. If you guys disagree with me, tell me about it. You don't have to dislike the video or unsub. You can just tell me about it. We can talk about it. Let's take it easy. <laughs> but if you guys agree, like the video and tell me that you agree. Whatever your thoughts are, tell me down below. All right, so Mr. Olympia is approaching and we have a lot of bodybuilders who are gonna be competing for sure. One of them is James Hollingshead, who you can see right here. He's about 14 weeks out of Mr. Olympia and at this point he looks really freaking massive. Now James, he has been making a lot of progress year after year, every single year he was far better than he was the year before. And there isn't really much to it, I mean he has been posting all of his physique updates very very frequently, he is not hiding anything, there is no surprise factor with James, what you see, that's what you get. Here he looks absolutely ridiculous, he looks massive and there is still 14 weeks for him to polish this physique and how well will he do the Mr. Olympia. I'm guessing best, best case scenario if everything clicks perfectly and if he really did make a lot of progress, especially in that back that, that really needs uh, improvement, he can be like top 6 at the best, but I don't think he will go under than 10th uh, place. What do you guys think? His buddy from Fuad Abiyad podcast, Ian Valier, has not qualified yet, but he probably will, I think he's doing Tampa and Texas and also Arnold Classic, so I'm pretty sure he will get that qualification, because he looks like a, like a monster right now. And what this means, no chest, is basically what everybody is criticizing him for, for having weak chest. He knows that as well, he is aware that his chest is a weak point for him, also his back, kind of. But here he probably got a really good, really juicy chest pump, he took a bathroom selfie under great lighting and his uh, chest doesn't look that bad, I mean, it looks insanely massive if you talk about uh, for an average guy, but for a bodybuilder of his size, I mean, his shoulders and arms and everything is definitely overpowering his, his chest, but it doesn't look that weak, really, I mean, it definitely doesn't look like he has no chest, he just has a little bit weaker, a little bit flatter chest, it's also, it's also a shape problem as well, but as you can see, I mean, the chest did improve. And this is also another guy who makes progress year after year. 
He's really devoted to bodybuilding. He's doing it 100%. He has no other interests, basically no other job. He's coaching a little bit. He's very limited in that regard. I mean, he's coaching Chris Bumstead. And everybody today is doing classic physique. So who is the best coach in classic physique? I mean, the one who is training the classic physique champion. So I think he would, he would be able to have like 5,000 clients if he wanted to. But I think he has like 20, maybe. So he doesn't want to take away from his bodybuilding career. He's doing it 100%. And that is why he's making such progress. You can see his waist also. Really small waist for such a big guy. We'll see how will he do it at Tampa. I am having a feeling that he's going to win that show. Rolly Winkler is apparently doing Iron Classic. So who else is going to challenge Ian? At the Iron Classic, how well will he do? I'm very, very curious to see that. But I first have to see what he looks like on that Tampa, uh, Tampa show. And then also Texas. So we'll see how Ian is going to do. I'm pretty sure he's going to win uh, Tampa again. And also Texas, he's going to be facing Steve Kuklo. So who's going to be there? Who's going to beat who? That's going to be interesting. That's going to be very interesting. If I was a betting man, I would bet on Ian. Even though Steve is probably like more established bodybuilder. But they are about the same age, I believe. And I think Ian is just making progress by a crazy rate. So I believe Ian is going to be much better than she this year. And he was last year. And last year he was 7th at the Mr. Olympia. So guys, consider that. He's going to be great this year. I have no doubts. But before Tampa, we're going to have Chicago, bro. And we're going to have Hunter Labrada and some other great guys. And also Charles Griffin. Now this is the area where Charles is going to be able to beat Hunter at. I mean, Charles has a great back, and it's really great, it's really big, it's really thick. Hunter is not known for having the best back. His back was a weakness last year. He did improve it this year, for sure, a little bit, but it's gonna be better than Charles Griffin's? No. Is back, though, gonna be enough for him to beat Hunter? Absolutely not a chance, if you ask me, because of his legs. Uh, genetically, his legs are not good. It really seems like it's genetic, I don't think he can actually fix this. So, legs and also the waistline, uh, here it looks pretty good, but on the stage you can see that he's not exactly uh, a bodybuilder with a super small waist. He kind of has a little bit of a blockier physique. As you can see right here, his legs, they look pretty bad. The waist doesn't look so bad, because his upper body is really massive, that it kind of makes his waist look pretty small, but what he has are low lats, really low inserted lats, that does make his uh, back look super, super dense, super thick, but the thing is, it just makes his body look uh, less athletic, you know, it gives him that uh, blockier kind of uh, shape, because it doesn't really, you know, his lads don't flare up, they are just connected to his hips, so you cannot really see, you know, that, that, that the wee taper, the proper wee taper, small waist, and then the lats popping, so that's gonna be a weakness for Charles, but he's a great bodybuilder, don't get me wrong. He's gonna challenge Hunter properly. Is he gonna beat him? I personally don't think so. If you disagree, tell me. For the end, I just have to mention this guy. This Russian kid. And I'm saying kid because I believe he's like 25, 24, something like that. I'm not really the one that follows all the new talent and stuff. I just follow like the, the professional league. But uh, this guy, he really made a mark, I mean, everybody is talking about him, a lot of people were tagging me in this photo, and I mean, <laughs> look at this, this just looks absolutely insane, I mean, this does look more impressive than any physique update that I saw uh, recently, like, he looks more impressive than Kai Green, than Phil Heath, than freaking Rolly Winkler, Big Remy, William Bonac, I don't know, is he photoshopping his photos or something, if you guys know about this, tell me, maybe, it could be photoshop, I don't know, his legs just look absolutely ridiculous. I mean, his legs look as big as his waist. And also, his legs are huge. And also, his lats are insane. Arms, chest, everything. This guy just looks like a Mr. Olympia right now. I don't know if he has the maturity once he gets peeled, but in this photo right here, this is one of the freakiest physiques that I ever saw, honestly. And the size, the ratios, I mean, uh, the proportions, the, the the shape, really just absolutely outstanding. And I believe he's like younger than me. I'm 25, he's like 24, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but something like that. I mean, this Russian kid is gonna win some shows eventually. I don't know why he's not a pro yet, but I'm sure he's gonna get the pro card whenever he starts prepping and does a pro qualifier. And eventually, we'll see him at the, at the Mr. Olympic full goes well. Oh, yeah, and while I'm at it, let me just mention Peter Molnar, who we kind of forgot about, because I think he qualified for the Mr. Olympia 2021 last year by winning one of the shows later in the year, 
So he said he's going to be doing classic physique this year. And there was a lot of talk about him beating Chris Bumstead. Nobody's really talking about him anymore because he's not really an Instagram celebrity, Instagram person. I mean, you don't really see him posting a lot of photos. He doesn't even, uh, he doesn't speak. I never really heard him speak English, like post any kind of videos. I don't know. He's not very much outspoken. So I had to mention him because somebody tagged me at this photo and it does look good. His waist looks uh, small, just what uh, is his trademark, basically his small waist and just extraordinary shape so let's not forget about him hopefully he will do a mr olympia in classic physique and you know crush some dreams that night really because this guy has so much potential for classic physique anyways guys that's gonna do it for this video whatever you think about whichever part of the video tell me in the comment section like this video if you enjoyed it and please subscribe for more videos like this all the best guys and bye bye